Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm going to talk in this video, probably the next one too, about the a recent paper that came out that talks about the ice sheets, mostly Greenland and Antarctica, and how there's lots of these feedbacks from these ice sheets that aren't considered in present models of, you know, temperatures in the future, how um, sea level rise you know, how, how, how um, basically how the planetary system will change. So I've often talked about the nonlinearity of the system being very, very high. You know, we're, we're clearly not in a linear regime with climate. We haven't been for quite a while. We're undergoing abrupt climate change. And we need to declare a climate change emergency, and we need to deploy methods to remove CO2 and methane from the atmosphere, and also deploy methods to cool the Arctic, to keep the sea ice there, to keep the methane in place, to make, make sure that Greenland isn't exposed by itself to leading us to huge sea level rise. You know, we're already, there's already lots of things built into the system, but that doesn't mean there's lots that we can't try to do to, to um, you know, ensure our survival on this planet. So I want to talk sort of about the nonlinearities in the system a little bit. So, you know, we've all played with an elastic band here. So the, the, when you pull it, the further you pull it apart, the further you stretch it, the larger the force trying to restore the elastic band. So what you're doing is you're deforming the rubber molecules, you're pulling them apart and they want to pull back together. So there's, and there's no permanent change within limits. Okay, so this force, this restoring force, it's like a spring. It's uh, minus kx. K is a constant. X is just the distance. So x, you know, if this is x0, you know, the position here, as you pull it there, you're increasing x. So the restoring force trying to pull it back is, is proportional to minus k times x. So it's minus because it's in the opposite direction. X is increasing this way and the force is coming this way. This is called Hooke's Law, and we've known it for a long time. You can Google Hooke's Law. If we have a uh, cantilever, for example, and fixing it at this end, and we put a weight here, the deflection amount is, again, um, the, the force of this pushing. Okay, so we've got a weight pushing down. There's a, a force coming up, trying to restore the position of this uh, ruler. And that force is proportional to this distance. It's minus kx. You're pushing down, the restoring force is coming up. Again, Hooke's Law. Same thing with the spring. Now, the problem happens when you exceed limits of stability. So in this case, you push down too far, you start getting permanent, you start ripping molecules apart, basically. Okay, there, there, there's not an elastic reversible situation. You start causing irreversible separation of the molecules ripping and then the ruler snaps or you know the same thing with the elastic band this is a good elastic band i don't want to snap it <laughs> for you but you get the idea that you know you go beyond a certain limit beyond a threshold and you get you get deformation permanent deformation of the molecules they start pulling apart that causes embrittlement of the material and then it snaps you know same thing if you're bending a stick Okay, um, so we want to make sure that we keep the earth within these limits, within these elastic limits where things are restored. Because if we go too far, um, then we get irreversible change. We can't go back. Okay, so that's the key point to remember, um, the nonlinear nature of things. So let's get right into the um, ice and the ice paper. Okay, uh, this is my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. Um, again, please, uh, I thank you all if, who have donated to me via PayPal down here. It's very easy to do it. You just, you don't need to have a PayPal account, just a credit card will do. And you just, it's, it's a secure online transaction. Um, and I appreciate it um, very much for people who have donated because it lets me continue doing lots of these videos trying to educate you on the risks of abrupt climate system change, joining the dots where other people 
don't join the dots. Most scientists are way too siloed, you know, in a very specific narrow area to communicate the science, um, and they're not good communicators. Okay, so this is my Twitter feed. A um, couple recent things I've just I've talked about about the global average temperature rise in in um, a video a recent video, and I think this is the most recent video where I talked about climate change mayhem down under. So Atacama Desert uh, deluges of rainfall with waterfalls, Argentinian heat waves region that's normally 50 Fahrenheit is reached over 91 they shut basically the town shut down um, and uh, everybody went to the beach but the water of course is too cold down there southern tip of Argentina and South America Tasmania there's areas of wildfires that are pristine haven't been exposed to fires um, because whenever there's storms there's lots of rain and the lightning doesn't ignite but in this case the rainfall that was falling down uh, evaporated, didn't hit the ground, the ground stayed dry, so these lightning storms ignited huge numbers of wildfires that are still burning in Tasmania, although they did get some relief recently with some rain. So here I'm talking about uh, this paper that came out in Nature, um, a refined view of the mechanisms and effects of ice sheet melt, things that haven't been considered um, in previous models. So this is a paper here. Global Environmental Consequences of 21st Century Ice Sheet Melt. Okay, so a couple, I'll go through the paper, but I'm going to talk about some of the um, things that are kind of important to know about first that are talked about in the paper. So one of the first things is there's a site called Climate, you can Google it, climateactiontracker.org. Okay, so if you go to climateactiontracker.org, what you can do is you can find out, you know, we're clearly not going to keep temperature to one and a half or, or two degrees. In fact, con different countries' commitments here. Um, so this is, um, this shows countries around the world and it shows what their, their climate action that they've talked, promised and, and that they've set in motion in the country, how insufficient it is to keep to two degrees compatible. So, so there's a couple countries here that are doing very well, and you can just click on them to get the information. Okay, role model, 1.5 degree. This country, if every country in the world did this, we'd reach, stay at the 1.5, according to this. Two degrees compatible, some other countries. Insufficient. Okay, highly insufficient. There's Canada, and critically insufficient, there's the U.S. Okay, so let's click on... Click on your country, and then here's a barometer showing, okay, um, so highly, in, critically insufficient. What If, if uh, every country in the world did what they did, the global temperatures would rise to plus, over plus four degrees. Three to four is the highly insufficient, two to three, insufficient, and so on. So we've got this bar barometer here. So let's look, at, I'm in Canada, so if I click on Canada, highly insufficient, view the country profile. Okay, and it gives a summary of the country. Um, in this case, Canada, the emissions in Canada, where we are now, the targets, what we have to do, and the different uh, wedges and things to, to bring us down the plan. Okay, um, and you can download the data, you can look at the different scenarios, there's uh, a description here, a detailed description of, of what Canada is doing wrong in order and, you know, why we're not, why we're, we have this highly insufficient rating. So let's go back. Okay, so the US, for example, is critically insufficient here. So, you know, here's what they're doing. Um, and again, there's a description of what's happening um, with the U.S. Um, lack of plan to reduce emissions. Okay, so this is a very good site um, that clearly shows we're not on target for for any temp any temperature. You know, whether it be one and a half or two, we're we're skyrocketing upwards. Now. I just want to give talk about the thermohaline circulation because, of course, 
you know, rapid ice melt from Greenland and Antarctica puts fresh water in the oceans. The fresh water up here in the oceans can disrupt the thermohaline circulation. Generally, in the winter when the ice is forming, the, the, uh, there's salt, some of the salt is ejected from the ice, so the ice, underneath the ice, it's, so ice forms, underneath though, the con salt concentration will be higher, the water's cold, so that can sink down into the abyss. Um, the Gulf Stream comes up here across the Atlantic, cools down as it goes into the northern regions and sinks down, and then, and then you get this whole pattern of thermohaline circulation. Of course, that can be disrupted with lots of fresh water in this region from melting from Greenland and lots of fresh water from melt from Antarctica. That whole process can be disrupted. And then what happens is the water becomes stratified and the, you know, in Antarctica, a big problem would be that because there's less mixing, um, unless there's more stratification of the water, there's less mixing. You have this fresh water lens on the surface of the water from ice melt. And that means that the water underneath that is warm and salty, so it's denser because it's very salty, denser than the colder water at the surface, the fresh water. So that warm, salty, deeper water down several hundred meters you know, I think on average, maybe 400 meters or something, 450 meters, that can penetrate underneath the ice and melt out the, um, the ice that's, that's sitting on the bedrock below sea level in Antarctica. Okay, so that's a key factor. Um, the ice, this is global sea ice extent, and here we are right here. And you can see that in recent years, you know, it's setting record lows at various times of the year. This is global sea ice area same thing and the point is is that as there's more and more ice melt from Greenland and Antarctica there's more and more fresh water put on the surface of the ocean and that fresh water is changing the the um, stratification the layers of with depth of the water so there's in Antarctica in particular there, there's warmer water warmer salty water trap below and that's etching away at the ice and I talked about the West Antarctic Thwaites Glacier where there's a massive cavity that is formed there. I talked about that in, in a recent uh, video. Um, just an to show you um, with an the map of Antarctica, this is a region here where there's tremendously fast melt of ice. This is another region where it's fairly fast. There's also signs that East Antarctica melt is greatly increasing. We've had ice shelf collapses here, which is like taking the cork out of a bottle and the ice flow rates off the glaciers is increased. In Greenland, um, some of the regions of high melting are this region, glaciers there, glaciers there. As we lose sea ice, as more and more sea ice dis disappears, then the ice shelves are cut back a lot, the water is a lot warmer, there's a lot more water infiltration down below. Um, now also with melting ice sheets, this is, this is pretty crucial. Okay, this is a Guardian article from, um, you can just Google the title, The Strange Science of Melting Ice Sheets, Three Things You Didn't Know. And here's one of the key things is that as the, so the Greenland, so basically let's say that there was a one millimeter rise of global average sea level caused by Greenland melt. Okay, this is what the local sea level would do. So around Greenland, it would drop significantly. It would drop a few millimeters. And the reason being is that when you lose ice on Greenland, the gravitational attraction to water surrounding is, is, is decreased. So the water moves away. So the sea level locally around Greenland actually drops. And the largest increase is on the opposite side of the planet over here in the central Pacific. Okay. The Marshall Islands would see a bigger rise. So one millimeter average sea level rise around the planet does not equally get distributed. You know, in the case of Greenland melt, it would drop here and increase here. The other thing is, uh, so this is the gravity effect. There's also the um, isostatic rebound. Ice pushes down the land. When the ice melts back, the land comes up. So it would appear to make the sea level drop in this particular region. Okay, so this is another effect, and the ice also changes.